No pass are, that seems like a good spot to go. See, they put a little archway here for us. Where the fungus, oh, here it is. What's this? Are those eggs, what is that stuff? Are those snail eggs? Looks like snail eggs. Why don't you poke it with a stick? Another monster, Saxagothea, conspicua. A podocarp with very erotic, uh, a very erotic trunk, very erotic cones. Everything about this tree just screams, get in a, get in a jacuzzi with me. We're going to sip on some non-alcoholic spritzers and hang out in a hot tub together, and it's going to be nice. That's what that tree says. All right, the trees speak to me. They're, they're talking to me now. And I'm looking for arachnitis, but I think we're too late. I don't know if we're going to find it here. Wonderful mycoheterotroph, right? But a boy can dream, can't he? See, this is the native rubus. You got that awful invasive one, and you got this little uh, low-growing. Look, there's a flower on it, dude. It's nice. I wonder what the fruit tastes like. Rubus is everywhere. Akina, another member of the Rose family, Rosacea. We're down here in South Chile. I don't know what our latitude is. What are we at? 40, 41? Looking at a rare and threatened species of conifer that grows in bogs. It grows in very wet areas. Okay, it's not like the Alerse can probably live a very long time, but it doesn't get that big. It's in the redwood family, Cupersaceae, and it's this guy right here, Pilgerodendron uviferum. Kind of looks like a juniper. When you get up close, you can see it's got much different foliage. Unlike the Alerses, it doesn't have those white stomatal bands on the undersides of the leaves. But it's a wonderful species. It's dioecious. Trees are the male or female. And it's threatened, and so few people know about it. You know, many people won't care, of course. You know, humans being a somewhat oblivious, selfish, short-sighted, myopic apes that they are. But uh, it's definitely worth covering. You can see it's very, very wet here. Lots of carex. You got baccarus. Underlain by sphagnum. I've known of this species for a long time. You rarely see them this big, though. You see them popping out at like 20 feet. There's one back there. This is a nothophagus. There's one back there that's easily, I don't know, I'd say 40 feet. 40 feet tall. So we're going to go in here. We're going to check it out. You know, uses a little bit of medicine. Next time you're stuck in traffic on a freeway or, you know, entombed in a shopping center or on the phone with customer service and you want to die. Here we go. Yeah, you know, some some like it wet. Some like it wet with a bed of sphagnum down below. And uh, Pilgerodendron is one of them. It's a bog plant. Like I said, a lot wetter. Needs it wetter than Alerces do. This is a female. Because plants are dioecious. You know, all these all these southern hemisphere compressoids are dioecious. See the cones right there? The mega stroboli. Beautiful cone architecture. And then I think, is that a male? No, that's a female too. You got a you get a male over there. They don't get too big, they probably live forever though. Few thousand years. Lovely bark. Lovely bark, sir. I feel titillated. And we got an Escalonia, of course. Your resident bag Escalonia. It's a bag. God, there's just something about those those scale leaves that gets me hot. You see, look at it. Even without the stomatal bands that Alerse has. It's still a very erotic tree. It just implies sensuality. Brick. See, Pilgerodendron is not a tree you're going to see in a forest. It's a bog plant. It needs a lot of uh, saturation, como se dice nice. Your Escalonia. You got your Berberus up there. See the Berberus with the little... This thing ain't going to poke it. Come on. There you go. There you go. See, a spiny bastard. Bird dispersed fruits, axillary leaves with, a, with petioles. You, there are petioles there. I do see petioles. You got spines. You got all this stuff that implies coevolution with mammals and birds. This is not, you know, that, that is kind of coriaceous. It does kind of hurt, you know? 
If I were to put some in my pants right now and walk around with it, I'd, I'd come out abraded. That's true. See, we got sedges here too. We got carex. Me, not so much. I'm not so so enthused, but it's nice to document. A nice baccarus. Is it Patagonica or Magellanica? It's a female plant. Whatever. Whatever. Which of those two species it is? Sphagnum everywhere. Because you get these little islands of sphagnum. It's kind of dry right here. Oh, it's starting to rain. That's nice. And yeah, not a lot of Pilgerodendron though. Just maybe four or five plants. Oh, you got a couple other ones over there. You got a, you got one up there. Here's that Impetrum, some dwarf Nothophagus. Just seen this little bug, bright orange, dipping around on it. I don't know where the hell he went. He got away from me. Oh, this is dense. You got Chiskea everywhere, Berberus. What is this? Oh, this is Nothophagus. Wonderful assortment of leaf lichens, though. You look good, sir. You got Pilgerodendron in there. Yeah, this is dense, man. I don't even know, you know, I don't know if I want to go in there. No ticks. That's been nice. Just horse flies. Just obnoxious horse flies. Drymus. What else we got? Can you go in there? What's the biggest Pilgerodendron? I don't know. This species needs a lot of water, evidently. Yeah, there's a little drainage here. There's a little stream. Saxagothia. Of course, there's that large Pilgerodendron. That's about, what is that, two feet at the base? No, that's an Anthophagus, actually. That is the Pilgerodendron. God, I love this tree. What a gorgeous, what a gorgeous species. Luzuriaga radicans. This climbing vine. Alstromeriaceae. Those white striations on the inner sides of the leaves. There you go. Beautiful beast. Very tannic water. Look how orange that is. A lot of stuff dissolved in there. Lots of organic material. There's the base of it. This beautiful, this beautiful bee. Oops. I just broke a little twig. It was dead, but still. You know, leave no trace. Right? God, how old. I don't see any Pilgerodendron recruitment. See, this is, there's, I'm not seeing any Pilgerodendron recruitment anywhere. No little guys, no little seedlings. You know, how long did they last on Antarctica before it froze over? What was an Antarctic bog like during the Oligocene? You know, nobody's asking these questions. Nobody wants to know. Nobody's curious. Everybody's preoccupied with bullshit. Uh, look at that beautiful bark. What do you know about Gondwan and Capresioids, huh? God, man, that's, that's, that's the largest Pilgerodendron I've seen. I haven't seen any like this anywhere. Just covered in mosses. It's thick down here. You got your Chiskea. South American bamboo everywhere. Wonderful habitat. Maybe not so rich, but wonderful habitat. I don't want to miss anything. It's just how deep is the layer of organic material, too? See, look at that papery bark. Beautiful architecture to those female cones. They decussate. Those decussate bracts. Little triangles alternating. Pairs of triangles, opposite pairs of triangles alternating at 90 degrees. You got a little bit of white stomatal bands on the top. Just barely enough wax. This guy doesn't like drying out. We got Gunnera magellanica, of course. From the weird order of angiosperms, Gunnerales. We got Impetrum from Ericaceae. We got Gaultheria from Ericaceae. The little ursulate bell-shaped flowers. Oh, those are already uh, 
with the fruit. Edible berries. Oh, here's staminate flowers on a gunnera. So this is a male. Because I believe gunnera magellanica is dioecious. See those? It's done. It's spent. But there you go. That's a tall... That's a tall inflorescence. Is it wind pollinated or insect? Oh yeah, there's another one. Look at that. We've only seen females. We've only seen female plants. Oh, they, these are all males. This whole colony, maybe it's all the same colony. This whole colony is all males. It's starting to pee on us now. It's fine. You know, on the slopes of this andesitic hillside, we got a valeriana going off. Just look at those tiny flowers. Oh, somebody's fruit's wind dispersed, huh? A little looks like a little dandelion akeen. There's the uh, the leaves. Oh yeah, just coming from her is that it's a it's a colescent. There we go. Nice close up of the developing megastroboli, the developing female cones on Saxagothia. Oh, it's Monetius. Look, it's got male male cones back there too. What makes it so conspicuous? What makes it so conspicuous? Look at that. It really is. It's trying to be capresioid. But we know you're a podocarp. We know those are just uh, shortened, inflated little scale branches. And so we enter Band from the Lodge Part 2. You come to these, these high mountain areas... Anywhere in a certain hemisphere. It happened in New Zealand too. We get banned from the lodge. See how long we last there. Beautiful Nathophagus forest though. That's a beautiful road cut right there. Look at all that. Look at all that hot pumice. Topped by a uh, impetrum. And Drymus andino. It's really pissing now. Nathophagus. Nice light canopy of Nathophagus. How old is this? Oh, that's good. That's good stuff right there. This is a nice soil amendment. Very rich volcanic soil. All that new shit. That new stuff that's been puked up on the Earth's crust. Volcanic soils are so rich. Now, as we ascend the trail past the ski lifts and look at this volcanic slope, it's a more open area adorned with black pumice. The black, of course, has been warmed by the sunlight earlier in the morning, and it's now steaming under the rain, just like a fresh elephant turd on some black asphalt. The assortment of trees up there, I assume, is Saxagothia and not the Fagus, with a hint of uh, the Chilean fire tree, that red proteaceous bastard you can see over there in Bothrium coccinium. We got an Adesmia. All over the ground. Nice, look, it's just steaming. And right here we got a member of the carrot family. Same genus as the plant known as Ureta, which looks so bizarre, but grows further north in the Andes Mountains, east of the Atacama. The genus is Azarella. It's in the carrot family, APAC, and this is Azarella diversifolia. You can see those compound flowers right there, those umbels, squat little umbels. Much broader leaves than Azarella compacta, which is a uh, Ureta. Oh, we got a Cicerinchium. We got a little Cicerinchium down here. Most of them are yellow in Chile, whereas they're purple in North America. There's those little leaves. Iris family, Iridaceae. Oh, yeah, look. Now, there are 10 Nathophagus species in Chile. And this is my favorite. This is Nathophagus pumilio. It doesn't get that big, but those leaves are gorgeous. Almost appearing to be triffid with little subtle undulating margins and ripples in them. That is a fucking hell of a forest. Soak it up. You know, I miss, I miss my dollar store umbrella. I don't know what happened to it, but it disappeared. Look at all that embothrium. These beautiful Nathophagus forests. 
Oh, this is nice. We got a silene karyophyllase with little rosettes, little leaf rosettes, and a big swollen base where that ovary is. It's another genus that's made around the world. Look at all the azarella everywhere. I'm really getting pissed on. Well, it's more like a tinkle. I'm getting tinkled on. But the camera's starting to fog up. I don't want to ruin my equipment. So maybe we'll see what we could do. Galtheria over there. Edesmia. You got all these nice grasses. You got all this nice stuff. 